I'm very happy that this panel is not just composed of Europeans, uh, so not as a therapeutic session, if you will, self-referential session, but also uh, looking, uh, you know, emphasizing on the look from abroad on Europe, and that's why I'm delighted to have with us the president of the Okamoto Associates. He's also a former special advisor to two Japanese prime ministers and a former Korea diplomat, one of his posts, uh, took him also as ambassador to Paris, so he knows Europe very well. Delighted to have him with us, Yukio Okamoto, ladies and gentlemen. Now, Yukio, you heard uh, many Europeans and non-Europeans talk about their current state. Uh, I, I hope it didn't put you in too much of a depression, uh, you know, but we are very eager, of course, to hear from one of the leading nations in Asia how Europe is being perceived over there. Is it still uh, a force to be reckoned with? Is it still an element that can play a vital role in international affairs? Uh, very curious to hear the perspective from Japan. Well, thank you, Mr. Asman. Um, well, thank you for including the dimension of Japan-EU relationship to this uh, panel. Um, my depression does not come from your talks, but uh, from the way we look at uh, the future of the world. Uh, from the Japanese point of view, at least uh, for many Japanese, the future of the world looks quite bleak, uh, gloomy, uh, sometimes uh, even oppressive, with uh, three di dictators going to influence the world affairs for a long time. Uh, both Mr. Putin and Mr. Xi Jinping, uh, I believe, uh, will change their internal rules to be able to stay there even after their expected uh, uh, term. Mr. Putin uh, will, of course, uh, win the next year's election by landslide. Uh, but will he step down in 2024? I don't think so. Uh, he may change the rule to be able to stay till uh, 2030, because he'll be only 71 uh, when 2024 comes. Uh, Mr. Xi Jinping, uh, he has already made his uh, move clear that uh, he's not going to be bound by the internal party rule of uh, stepping down after 10 years. Uh, so. Uh, from 2022, the party 20th convention till uh, 21st convention of uh, 2027, he'll be there. Uh, Mr. Kim Jong-un, uh, unless he's eliminated, will be there for 30, 40 years. And uh, we have uh, territorial disputes from all these uh, uh, countries. And... Uh, we even feel that uh, the world order, uh, which we have uh, uh, endeavored so hard to build uh, in 20th century, uh, based on the common universal value, may come to uh, a, an erosion. Um, and uh, looking at the United States, uh, we are going to have a quite unique um, president uh, I said uh, <clears throat> Mr. Trump will be a good pre president for Japan, but uh, will he be a good president for the world? I don't know. Um, it remains to be seen. But uh, the past record uh, does not uh, encourage us uh, very much listening to his inaugural speech. And then the past uh, uh, United Nations General Assembly speech this past uh, uh, September, where he essentially said that uh, the United States will only mind uh, its own business, and all the countries should do the same, will be the shining example. Now, who are going to look after the public goods? So I have been uh, campaigning in Japan uh, everywhere that uh, now uh, Japan should be really one of the uh, banner bearers to uh, support uh, the public goods um, and departing from the diplomacy of uh, rhetorics. And uh, who in the world can we partner with? There's only EU. EU is the best partner for Japan to do uh, this new uh, campaign. Um, first of all, uh, 
uh, Europe is uh, uh, sharing the common destiny in terms of security uh, with Asia. If, uh, uh, as Mr. Uh, Lucian said, uh, Kim Jong-un shoots uh, his missiles uh, westbound, it will uh, cover the entire Europe uh, very soon. Um, we are in one unity. We don't have to wait for the ambitious plan of uh, one belt, uh, one world uh, concept of China. Um, economic uh, dimension, uh, we have so many complementariness. Uh, we both lack resources. Uh, and the efficient use of uh, natural resources is uh, incumbent upon uh, uh, Japan and Europe. There are a lot of other complementariness. Uh, which I will leave it to a uh, smart international relations student. Uh, anyone can tell you that. But so in the remaining uh, minutes, I am going to say something uh, other people uh, will never say. Uh, that is, it will benefit uh, Japan greatly to uh, partner with uh, EU. Uh, but uh, uh, have we come really to the reconciliation with Europe? Uh, we have not uh, been able to settle the issue of uh, POW with the uh, United Kingdom, not with the uh, Netherlands. Um, and uh, we have not uh, created a new era with uh, Germany. Uh, there was an interesting uh, BBC research done two years ago, asking Japanese and uh, German people, uh, do you like uh, Germany? Do you like Japan? And uh, you know, Japanese love Germans. Uh, they consider Germany to be the uh, war partner. Uh, we fought the war together. And uh, close to uh, half the population answers, uh, we have uh, mainly um, positive view about uh, Germany, as against only 3% saying uh, we have a mainly negative view about Germany. Now, the same uh, public opinion poll in Germany tells diametrically opposite result, uh, with only 20 some percent of Germans saying uh, uh, they have a mainly positive uh, view about Japan. But uh, those people who have mainly negative view about Japan, you know how many? 46% uh, as against Japan's 3%. Um, I don't know. My conjecture is that uh, still many Germans think that uh, Japan uh, is uh, uh, the partner of uh, Nazis uh, who brought uh, the country to destruction. And uh, Japan has uh, a partial responsibility in that. Um, I think uh, we have to really um, make uh, our uh, current uh, set of values clear to German people. But uh, the blame should fall also on us. Have we been squarely facing with the past uh, why have we not come to the reconciliation with uh, uh, other Asian nations? Um, of course, we have our uh, own positions. We have been apologizing over and over again to Asian countries. The war reparation um, from late uh, 1950s to 60s amounted to almost 30% of our national budget. Uh, but no matter what we do, we are not really uh, being forgiven, especially by China and uh, Korea. My, I teach at the university, my students are uh, asking, Mr. Okamoto, how long do we have to keep apologizing? Uh, and I understand them. I'm sympathetic to them. Because it's not uh, uh, even the doings of their grandfathers. It, it's something done by their great-grandfathers, or sometimes great-great-grandfathers. But they have to live with the shackles of uh, uh, the past uh, uh, sin for many, many years. Uh, and looking at uh, Europe, I mean, the, the amount of uh, uh, the level of reconciliation you've reached is uh, very impressive. 
And uh, I think uh, uh, it is incumbent on Japan to really uh, reform our education system. Uh, there's nothing wrong with the textbooks. I tell you, I read uh, all the 27 textbooks uh, uh, taught in high schools, but they are fair. But uh, they're not really uh, taught to students uh, in an obligatory manner. Uh, we have to do that. Uh, and okay. we have to uh, make uh, this uh, uh, repentance and our resolution uh, clear to uh, generations, um, to future generations. And uh, I think uh, uh, what uh, we will learn in dealing with uh, uh, Europe, uh, especially EU, uh, will really help us to acquire the new uh, dimension, how we can transcend the past, uh, to come to grips with the past, and through the collective wisdom uh, to approach uh, the final reconciliation uh, in Asia. Yeah. I think that's what uh, we are going to benefit from our uh, union. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you to uh, Yukio Okamoto saying that uh, Europe uh, is and remain a vital pillar for uh, relationships, uh, not, just in not just in political terms, but also security terms and uh, looking at the reconciliation process that still needs to be furthered between Japan and the European continent.